Hey, Schmoozaloo's here. I'm here with David Gallagher and Steve Ellis. These guys are the creators, art, artists, and authors of The Only Living Boy and a few other things. And to get things started, first, I like to tell you, like, I actually read this book last night, and I've had it for a while. I've been really busy, and it is really an amazing book. It just starts off, it's action packed, and I'll let these guys talk about it. So, can you give us a little background on The Only Living Boy? Like, some of the ideas of like what you got together to create it, or you know, tell us when you got the book. Uh, so, go ahead, Steve. Do you want uh, okay. To? Well, uh, the only living boy is about a uh, thirteen-year-old boy who uh, runs away from home, um, and he ends up kind of falling asleep and finding himself in a kind of a new world with uh, a patchwork world that's pieces of different alien planets, and uh, he's alone. He's the only one of his kind, and he's in this world with all these other creatures and aliens and monsters, and uh, and he is kind of in the beginning up against a uh, what would you call it a, 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 a being that's doing experiments on his on him and the other creatures in the world. Right. So it, we kind of describe it as a cross between the Jungle Book and the Island of Doctor Moreau. There's insect. Hive cities and there's awesome mermaid warriors and crazy underground rat-like creatures and awesome bat-like dog things and a weird menagerie of grotesqueries that are kind of interesting and it's all overseen by the maniacal Doctor Once and the dreaded Lord Balakar, who's this chimerical dragon that oversees everything from his tower on the price of it. And what I like about it, too, is that like, when you start reading this, and I think you guys specifically plan to do this, you're just thrown right into this world really quick without really knowing what's happening. So there's a lot of mystery. So the whole time I was reading this, I just want to know what was going on. Like, it kind of captivated me that way. Cause as, as, like I said, you're just like thrown right in the middle of action, and then there's not like a background story. You're like thrown right in the middle of the story, which is what I like. So you kind of discover what's happening without this big long prologue before and everything. So this is, uh, is there two parts of this? I think when I read this, there was like the kind of part one and two within this book, or? Well, that, that, what, the way, um, well, that's the first of five traits uh, okay. that come out in the, in the first big story arc. But uh, when we initially released it uh, as a as a floppy comic, that was actually technically two separate comics. Yeah. So we we are they're they're kind of uh, since we're doing them as trades now, um, they're going to come out as five ninety page books. Wow. Um, so this is the first. The second one's going to be out in uh, July. So you got four more coming, and it's just going to end the series, or you may continue it past that. I'm too much metal. I don't know it yet to this point. I know. No. There, 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 it never, it's like the never ending story. No. Um, go ahead. The way it was planned out is this, this the story of Eric, uh, this story of Eric, this tale ends at the end of the fifth book. But the, the world expands beyond him. So there will be other stories that, that, that stem out of his experience. Oh, wow. Well, and I'll tell you, actually, Slade is who introduced me to the book, and we have Slate on the end here, and cause he's like, you've yeah. got to check this book out, it's pretty cool, so I bought a copy, but the problem is, I've been so busy, I just, until recently, I could read it, so Slate, you got any comments? Of well, well, what's really cool about um, here is we like to get a lot of, uh, a lot of new books and a lot of new, different things, which is why we try to make our story very diverse, and when Ernie had talked to them about bringing them in, we had known about this book, and I had seen a little previews yeah, of this book when I was out at the uh, Comics Pro meeting, and um, we ordered a whole bunch of them. And we actually originally ordered a whole bunch of them before they're coming here, um, but we sold out so fast. We actually have done several orders for this book because so many people like it. And me and Tanya and Ernie and a few other people will be in here will always mention this book. And because it's like an all ages book that has action, adventure, monsters, and you know, Boys, like it's just it's a lot of people really like it because that's what people are looking for. They want a book that everyone can enjoy, whether it's guys like us, whether it's a little kid looking to have a fun story, um, to a parent who just wants a way to have something cool they can read to their kids. It's it's a perfect, I think, like a, a it reaches a wide yeah, yeah yeah it reaches a wide variety of people. It's got a good demographics, I think. 
And something too, when I was reading it, like it looked like it'd make a really cool animation, like the story wise. I don't know if hopefully maybe you guys get that into an animated movie. You never know, but I thought it would make a good one because I was actually visualizing. Because if you look at this book, the art is just really amazing in the story. And it's yeah, just, I mean, I mean, you see one of the prints here that he's done. The, and this is pretty much as good as the art is all the way through the block. I really enjoyed seeing that. But like I said, it's so visual. You can actually picture the action so well. So you got some more prints. We'll stick up here. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you had mentioned this, the story you told me about this particular print was oh, pretty cool. The, the, was it this one or was it the... Uh, um, oh, the, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So, so you'll yeah. see there's... Tell us about when we first, here. Yeah, when we first did the book, this was going to be the original cover. And uh, we realized that when we were working on the cover, and we were working on the book, we were like, I don't know if we want to reveal this guy yet, Balakar. So we actually... Uh, actually, this is the same one. Okay, so if you see... Where's the other one? Yeah. I just realized that's the, that's the blue one, too. Oh, did we sell it? No, no, there's one. Sorry. So oh, yeah, I think that's this was one. actually the original cover of the book, uh, of the of the, the, the floppy comic book version yeah. of it, um, and we had gotten rid of Balakar because we wanted to focus more on on the boy and not reveal the secret. Because so this was the original cover, and was like, oh, that's what we got to do, and then uh, we changed. Which it was out. good. That goes along with what I was saying, like how the, yeah. the, the the book is like a mystery yeah, unfolding of what's happening. I really like that element. And that's actually what's what's really fun is having a character like Eric who comes to this world without his memory. It removes a lot of cynicism. It removes a lot of preconceived notions. So he's discovering this world as we're discovering as readers more about him and his world. So everybody comes to, including the main character, comes to the story without any preconceived notions of, of what to expect. And that, as a creator, as a writer... It's really, really interesting in telling this story. I, I like the element, too, of how it's not just him discovering the world. There's, element, there's a big element of where he's actually discovering himself, which is really cool. So you have that dichotomy going on at the same time, which works really well. I just want to ask you also about the project you guys did, which was High Moon. And can you tell everybody out there watching this a little bit about High, High Noon, when it come out, and what's it about? Yeah, so High Moon is a story of a, it's a werewolf western series that we did for, uh, originally did as a webcomic um, for DC Comics, and it's, uh, we serialize it online, and it's the story of this unchanging man uh, in a changing time who's forced with this decision to either live like a beast or die like a man, and it's awesome, uh, and one of the things I love so much about it is that it's grounded in this historical time of the 1890s. Um, but then it's also got cool steampunk golems and demonic soldiers and cowboys wrestling werewolves and hybrid Jekyll and Hyde kind of monsters. So it's fun to tell this sort of unique and unusual story about um, savagery and moving from the technology, Gilded Age, and change, and, and when do we fight change and when do we accept it. So it's, it's been just a really spectacular story to tell. And this, this is mainly online, but it's also you can get copies, hard copies, which is right. myself as a collector, I have to get a hard copy of everything. So, so the the the, uh, the, the book, um, the actual books were sold out, uh, the original print run, a few years ago. So the the what we did to keep it to keep it going is we uh, we have it online at timeofcomic.com, right. and so people can read all the first four, the first three stories that are in the book. And there's also a bonus story that's online that doesn't exist in the book because it never right. it was never printed, which is sad because that's actually the the kind of everything's building up to that one. And we have more stories to tell on High Moon as well, and we're working on. So you don't go back to that. maybe after you finish the Only Living Boy, you don't go back to High Moon and maybe do some more stories. Yeah, in a perfect that. world. In yes, a perfect world. In a perfect world, the 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 dream would be to juggle the two of them as they move forward. Right. And we actually keep, um, we also have another series we do, Box 13, that's also available as a web series. Um, so you can actually go to our website, bottledlightning.com. There's hyphen between bottle and lightning. Uh, and you can check out, there's, there's links directly there for Box 13, uh, Box 13, The Pandora Process, The Only Living Boy, and High Moon. And you can check all those out online. We also have a portfolio for the work we did on Green Lantern Corps. Uh, Dark Star in the Winter Guard for Marvel, Deadlands we did for Image Comics. So there's a really nice um, sense of 
uh, scope and scale when you look at our work and compare it to everything else we've done? So everybody can follow you basically go into your uh, website and keep updated on the next yeah, issue we're all coming out. Facebooks. Okay, <laughs> and on Facebook. So you guys can follow them. We'll have on the screen right now you can see their web page to go to and their information so you can follow these guys. Find out some of the new stuff they're doing. Really cool stuff. So you guys got anything else that you'd like to Nothing. share that's happening? We can officially mention, but yeah. check out our stuff online, Living Boy. Um, the volume 1 is in stores now. Volume 2 comes out in July. Uh, volume 3 in October. We'll be at New York Comic Con. We'll be at Book Expo in Chicago. And wow. we'll be doing tours um, around the country where we're teaching kids how and adults of all ages how to make comics themselves. So we'll be doing workshops empowering other people on how to make comics for themselves. And right now we're at Friendly Neighborhood Comics in Bellingham, which Slade here is a manager and I'm guessing you guys will probably come back here at some point, maybe? Oh, oh yeah, we'll, yeah. Def Again. we'll definitely have them back. So Actually, and if you go to uh, our fa our Facebook page, Friendly Neighborhood Comics, uh, you can actually see, uh, I took a bunch of pictures, which they, he knows, but he didn't know yet, of them teaching and showing kids how to draw. It was a lot of fun. So if you missed this time coming to get books signed and get, get to meet these interesting guys, uh, come to the next one. We'll, just like I said, follow up uh, Friend of Neighborhood Comics on their page, and they'll keep updates. So you guys are probably having more and different people coming yep, out. Yeah, we know, have a lot, of, a lot of events. Uh, free comic book day, we're going to have Veronica Fish and Andy Fish, who do uh, a lot of the Archie books and a lot of other books. Yes. You guys are constantly um, getting a lot of different yeah, artists in. Yeah, we, so. uh, for the next couple months, uh, definitely check us out. We have a lot of people coming in. But as far as the only boy, uh, these guys are graciously signing a bunch of them, so we will have signed ones. Lots of copies, too, here, yeah. so come pick up a copy for sure. So, you guys, thanks a lot for being on Schmoozer Loose. Thank you. It's sure. awesome. Thank you. And so, we're signing out. Thanks for tuning in. Schmoozer Loose, get your geek on. <laughs>